Hi. So in the in the last uh, session we have discussed about uh, the concept behind the um, memcached and uh, what are the different features uh, it provides. What is the what is the utilization? What is the pros and cons? All these concepts we have discussed in the last last session. Today we will discuss about how we can install it on uh, on a Windows machine or any Linux Linux machine, and then we'll see uh, how we can connect it from the Java program and. Uh, utilize it functionality so let's start with it to, to, to install the windows uh, you need to go to this uh, download link uh, to get the exe file of memcached and then uh, i have already downloaded it so i'll show you basically how to start then uh, how, how to start the memcached command so in the uh, as soon as that gets downloaded, then we will unzip it and then we will go to memcached fold, uh, folder and use this command to start the memcached uh, service in Windows app, Windows machine. So let's look at that. So I will download it here. Uh, this is the location where uh, memcached uh, has been unzipped. And the command prompt will go to that directory. And then we'll execute uh, the uh, uh, basically the command to start the service. So here we are specifying the uh, what is the memory requirement. How would you like here we have specified 128 m 128 MB uh, memory to and uh, 128 MB to basically allocate a memory for this uh, memcached and to start it in the verbose version verbose, verbose mode. <coughs> So now our memcached process is started. We can check it in the basically uh, process list. So that's what we'll just check now. So in the basically task manager, uh, we can, uh, we'll see uh, memcached process running. Here it is. So this is the memcached process which is running here. So this is how basically uh, this is a straight way. Uh, basically installation on Windows service. Uh, there are other server ways, uh, several ways where we can basically register, register it as a service on Windows uh, machine so that whenever your Windows uh, machine starts, memcached service will start automatically. So you can basically get the uh, tutorial about that uh, online anywhere. After this, after this, now we'll see how basically we can install it on Linux machines. So just look, just uh, let's go through that. So on Linux or Ubuntu uh, machines, uh, memcached uh, already comes as a package in, in the basically base base uh, installation. So so you can just go there and go to that folder and uh, you can configure the it or you can compile it from source. So go to that memcached uh, folder if you downloaded it from the uh, site, the source code, run the auto config command and then uh, in the configuration uh, dot config where uh, command you should uh, provide the input parameters like what is the prefix of your uh, installation. You can also specify memory requirements, how much uh, RAM you want to allocate for memcached process and then uh, execute the make command and then uh, make and install. So this will set up and start uh, the memcached uh, process on the Linux machines. Now uh, we'll see how can we connect memcached from Java program and how can we put the variables on memcached and how can we fetch how can we set fetch and delete the basically variables so for java uh, there is one jar that is py memcached memcached jar which has the basically api implementation of connected connecting to memcached and uh, there are several basically, fun basically functions which are provided in java doc so this is kind of uh, a driver for memcached 
for Java client. You will see in the uh, Eclipse. I'll show you the programs running and uh, how do we to basically need to code it to connect to Memcasty and then what are the basically how to execute set and get delete uh, methods so this is a very simple Java program before that you can see that like I already, I have already downloaded the spy memcasty uh, jar and I and I added it into my class path so if you look at it this is the memcast demo program where uh, we are basically we will be adding the user's object uh, to the memcast memcast and then we will fetch the user's object from there so I, we have already made a user's class and it has two attributes int, int and name so we have made a user of that then we have in this type obviously uh, set its id and name this is an important part where basically uh, we have formed a memcache client client is equal to new memcache client and here we have specified the uh, at basically port at which it is at, at which the memcache is running and uh, this is the basically ip Currently, uh, it is uh, basically MemCache is running on my local Windows machine. That is why I have provided it the local IP. Double one two double one is the uh, default port for MemCache. You can change it uh, during configuration and it's uh, basically install, install during installation or and the configuration of MemCache. Uh, then we'll uh, we are called the C dot C dot set. Uh, this is the key. I already already told you that uh, MemCache is a key value. Oh, Straight forward key value basically stores in uh, cache. Nothing, nothing much is special. So here, uh, this is the key, and users is the value. Uh, here, this is the time, time out, time or expression, time of the, of the key, of the basically cache. So probably uh, generally people put it uh, basically uh, a huge value here. So basically, cache caching uh, that particular key at its value would be available for a long time. Currently, this is in terms of seconds, so I added 3600, so it would be kind of uh, cache would be available for one hour. As soon as you do this, this uh, key and value gets basically inserted into, into cache. Again, you can get uh, from c.get and passing the same key, you will get the uh, same object what you have passed. So make, uh, basically, uh, just check out basically it's, uh, its return type. Get always returns an object because it doesn't know uh, what is the... Uh, implementation type or actual type of the object which is, which is returning so you probably need to type cast it later as soon as you get it so here we'll print it and then uh, there are several utility uh, methods memcache client provides like get status get a status of st specific items uh, it will basically show you um, what is the status of the uh, memcache how many uh, keys are how many objects are inserted there what is the cache hit ratio what is the size has been what is the memcache size which has been consumed and how much is it is remaining and lots of other other basically and uh, attributes and information is provided so you can basically go and check uh, in the api then by simply calling c dot delete and passing the key uh, that uh, basically key and value will be deleted from memcache Moving forward, so as soon as we run it. You saw the output here that uh, object one which got inserted and then as soon as you get it you also it is showing the uh, basically address of the object current by actually uh, this user's 
uh, class doesn't have to string method that is why as soon as we get the object it will be shown like this and then this, this is statics get a status stats basically tells us the statics uh, what is this our how many delete hits we have got how much data has been uh, what is the total byte what is the total number of items and lots of other basically stat uh, basically uh, information so we'll see in detail so here you can see uh, lots of uh, variables present in statics lots of information so you can basically go through them into java doc and you can understand what is the meaning of each and every uh, attribute so here we have seen an object which which was getting basically inserted now we'll see another uh, another program uh, where we will be basically uh, casting a key value pair of strings only so before that i can i just wanted to basically in, uh, tell you about name space uh in memcast we don't have any kind of uh, any concept of packaging or something but suppose uh, the requirement like requirement is like the same memcast should be used for several by several applications so how do you basically distinguish the uh, keys uh, which are basically used by different applications so what we can do we can define an name space like i, I have defined here uh, account dot uh, learnt java gt dot demo and we'll append it to uh, the key and then uh, then insert the data so it would be kind of unique it would this key would always be a unique key for an application so that uh, that's what i would here again we have made the, just uh, the, uh, a client and then one key value pair key one key one key uh, value one key two value two and then uh, client dot set name space dot q1 this would be our key to, uh, total uh, this is the cache timeout and this is the value similarly for for key 2 we have added and then fetched again fetched from the uh, cache uh, sony turn basically console then then we have called the client dot delete key 2 we are deleting here and then when after deletion when we try to basically fetch the data from uh, for key to uh, this should show the null value because uh, it has been already been deleted from cache so we'll run this program and see how, how basically how it behaves so delete is the method uh, basically which helps us uh, to delete the data set is the basically uh, um, for adding the data and get it for fetching the data we have discussed in the concepts like uh, the object which we are trying to basically add to memcache those should be serializable so you can directly check here like this is the user's object which we have made that is why i have basically uh, it is implementing serializable interface serializable is a basically marker interface which makes your object as uh, eligible for serialization so if i remove this and try to uh, put this object on memcache probably it will show an error so let's look at that now run, let's run this program By mistake, I, I run it in uh, it is in debug mode. I'll cancel it and write it in the Java program. 